thank you for coming. Um, today I'm going to be talking about CI, but not continuous integration, but continuous improvement, and how you can use uh, these techniques to help your career. So first, a few words about me. Uh, so my name is Clément Bernard. I'm a senior software engineer. And uh, I'm working for the CPE team, so the Community Platform and Engineering, and we are managing and dealing with the infrastructure and the services for the Fedora and CentOS community. Um, I'm very passionate about Agile and continuous improvement, so uh, that's the reason why I'm, today. I'm here today. Um, I'm sure you've recognized my uh, French accent, but I'm currently based in Poland, so not very far from here. So, why is it important to um, try to get better and try to develop uh, your, your career? So, the World Economic Forum uh, is running a survey every couple of years, and in 2018, they did a survey with companies uh, across different industries, and they look at um, what the future is for those companies, what they are looking at in terms of skills, in terms of how technology will impact their industry. And pretty much the world is changing fast. Uh, we know that because in technology, uh, there is a new technology, pretty much there is new things to learn. And across all different industries, it's expected that by 2022, an average of 42% of the required skilled will be different in the workforce. So people um, doing that job will have to learn new skills and be able to master uh, new ways of working. So usually when we talk about career and development, we've got like those questions. Um, what you're going to be in five years? What you're going to be in 10 years? And I, I don't know for you, but for me, it's always been like, uh, I kind of enjoy doing this, I like that, but it's very difficult to know what you're going to be doing in five years. It's quite, uh, quite a struggle. Um, in fact, for me, when, when, I, when I started my, my career, I think in my five, five, uh, first five years, I worked in four different jobs, so four, four different projects. Um, after a year or so in one job, in one project, I was getting bored and didn't really know if there was any future for me, so I was just changing and trying to see something else. So from software development, testing, uh, kind of um, uh, integration work. So what is the right path? Well, how, how can you know, how can you try to, to find out. Um, I think from my experience, there is no right path, but it's, try to, it's good to try to understand um, what you like and try to get some hints uh, to what you would like to do uh, in the future. Um, so I'm pretty sure we all got this, like around this time of the year actually, like, personal development discussions and trying to, to come up with a plan. And most of the time it's like, yeah, I'll try to find one or two trainings for this year or try to go uh, to one or two conferences and that's all. There is no like real effort during, during the year. Uh, it's kind of, we're trying to think about it uh, beginning of the year and when the year finishes, say, oh yeah, so what did I do last year for my personal development? Um, we'll see how we can try to make this maybe a bit more continuous and um, um, not just a one-off uh, every, every year. So just a quick definition about uh, continuous improvement. So this comes from the world of uh, production and uh, mostly uh, from uh, the Toyota production system. And it's an effort to reduce waste in a production line. You want uh, your factory line to 
to work as efficiently as, as, uh, as possible. Um, so you can apply it to processes, to a product, but it can also be applied to a person and to yourself. Uh, it's very often associated to Kaizen, so it's a Japanese word. Um, Kai is change and Zen uh, good. So if you want to look a bit more uh, about that. And it's based on those three main concepts, that is feedback, uh, efficiency, and evolution. So um, the efficiency, as I said, you try to reduce waste and try to be as efficient as possible. Um, you try to get feedback very uh, as often as you can, so uh, you can try to improve in, in small and iterative cycles. So what does it mean for you, uh, for your career? Um, so it's pretty much trying to spot those like small opportunities to learn something new, or to um, get better at something that you already do. Uh, trying to build up on this small iteration and getting feedback, so uh, the same concept, trying to not wait one year, but maybe have a look at it every quarter or even more often. And have this kind of retrospection uh, and analysis and try to understand, yeah, so I try to learn this two language, was it was it good for me? Uh, did I enjoy it? Is it useful uh, or not? So for people that are uh, into the software development world, it's very, oh, what I just thought about, it's very related to uh, Scrum. Right? You know, short iterative cycles, uh, retrospective feedback. So this is not really something new. It's uh, just something that you apply to yourself instead of your, your product and your team. So knowing this, I think the main, the main question and the main thing that uh, you should start uh, thinking about is who you are, what you enjoy, and what you, you want to do. Um, so at Red Hat, we have like a quite a good um, template and a, a framework for that. Uh, that's called OPT, so for organization, uh, P for passions, and T for talents. And it looks at what are your passions, your talents, and how you can use those uh, to the benefit of the organization. And really what you want to have is uh, to try to find the sweet spot where your job is the combination of your passion and talent at the benefit of, of the organization and it gives, it gives a lot of value to, to your organization, to your company. So it doesn't take long, it takes five minutes, you put uh, uh, on a piece of paper uh, maybe one or two passions, um, what you really, really like to do. Uh, the talents are a bit more <laughs> difficult to, really to, to find out, but um, if you think a little bit more about it, you try to see what, what kind of feedback you get if people tell you that you're quite good at this or nothing like that. It, it must be that uh, you are talented in that. Um, so this gives you already a very good uh, foundation for trying to build up your career and trying to uh, go in the direction that you will enjoy. No matter what the job will be, if it's a combination of uh, the things that you are passionate about and talented about, it will probably uh, be very good for you. Um, once you have this, you can go a little bit further and there is this uh, other, other tool and other framework called SWOT. It's the same, maybe it takes, instead of five minutes, it, it takes 10, 10, 15 minutes. And it looks at what are your strengths, um, your weaknesses, uh, and opportunities and, and threats. And I think this is good because it tells you that you don't have to be perfect. And you will be stronger in some areas, but you will be also weaker in others. 
and maybe it doesn't make sense for you to try to improve in your uh, weaknesses. If, for example, you're very strong, very technical, and very good at programming, and you have a bit more struggle with uh, like giving a presentation or things like that, it might not be your career path to go and uh, present, uh, do presentation to customers or do presentations to uh, conferences, nothing like that. You will be more comfortable and uh, better into a very technical uh, career path. Um, so that gives you kind of, uh, that makes you kind of uh, think about yourself, what you really enjoy, and try to narrow down the scope of possibilities and uh, what you want to do later. Once you have this, you have to realize that maybe your worst enemy is yourself. And I'm sure everyone's got this little voice in their head saying, ah, I'm not a very good swimmer, or uh, I can't do music, or I'm not good at math, or like that. So, this little voice, it's what we want to try to, to fight, because it's what is usually stopping you from, do, from doing new things, and it's what is stopping you to, from uh, improving or trying to uh, evolve to different uh, different career path. For that, uh, there is a very good uh, framework uh, that's called the cycle, the circle of stu of success, and I really like it because it's very simple. Uh, it starts from uh, stating that every people have an unlimited potential. So pretty much we can do whatever we want. If we committed, motivated, and we decide to do something, we will be able to achieve it. Um, this potential will result in some actions that we take. So we have unlimited pot potential, we can do an unlimited set of actions. These actions will result in some uh, experiences, either positive or negative. And those results will influence our beliefs and how we think about ourselves. So a nice example if, is um, tomorrow I decide that I want to be able to run a marathon. I never run in my life, but uh, that's my goal, and that's the way I want to, uh, that's uh, a goal and a development action that I, I want to take. I know that I've got the potential to do it because many people are doing it. Um, one possible action that I can take is uh, go to the uh, shop to, to buy some trainers and go and try to run 42 uh, and so kilometers. Most likely the result of this action will be a, v a terrible experience. <laughs> I, will, I will be out of shape, my leg will hurt, and the last thing I will want to do is to try again. And I will have influenced my belief that running is not for me and I should definitely do something else. If um, I take this problem in another way, and instead of trying to run directly those 42 kilometers, but I go and say, oh, actually I'm not in a very good shape. I might start with 15 minutes today. I'll go run 15 minutes. The chance is that I will have a nice experience. Um, I'll try to go and run 15 minutes when uh, it's a sunny day outside, and I will enjoy uh, myself. I might do that for a week. Then after a week, say, okay, so now 
I'm pretty good at 15 minutes, I'll do 20, 25 minutes, and so on. And maybe after a month, two months, three months, depending of, of yourself, you will be able to, to run maybe two, three hours. Um, it's really this way of trying to find these small actions that will result in a success that will give you, um, that will impact your belief and will kind of start to make you uh, feel good and make you think that you can do it. So really, action is, is the key. Um, but then, we always have this little voice that's, oh yeah, but this is not quite right at this time, or it's raining outside, or um, oh, maybe I should wait a little bit more about this or, or that. Um, so, it's good to try to have this safe environment where um, whatever action you take, obviously you want to try to have this success, but sometimes you will fail or something will happen. But I think what you want to try to have, it's an environment where failure will not have a big impact and you will be able to fail safe, pretty much. So if you fail at something and it doesn't cause any troubles or anything, you will be able to <coughs> retrospect it and say, oh, okay, so I tried uh, um, I tried to learn swimming and I went to uh, to the Baltic uh, Sea, for example. I never swam before of my life. That may be not a very safe environment. <laughs> um, if you go to a swimming pool where there is a like, uh, lifeguard or Anything that's a bit safer, and if you're not very comfortable, you will have people that, that will be helping you, and you will be learning and improving. So, success is good, but um, there's also the possibility to try to find some actions that will put you on the edge, and you're not definitely sure about, uh, about success. Uh, and you can find some kind of, uh, of success in the fail. One another problem we, we often have is to be a bit too comfortable. And we have this nice comfort zone. Uh, we are very good at what we do. And what's outside of this box, it's uh, often a bit, a bit scary. An opportunity to grow and to uh, become better uh, at things is to try to, to get out of this box. And I, I quite like this uh, this slide. Is, yeah, if if I don't if I if I feel uncomfortable, I, I think I'm doing the right thing. So all this is really about uh, something that. Uh, called the growth mindset, and always trying to uh, look for opportunities to learn uh, new challenges, opportunities to do something new. And um, it is to put in contrast with the, the fixed mindset. But it's the opposite. We don't really want to talk about this. So all this is great, all these are, are great tools to, to put in, in place, but in the end, really, your careers, and I think, I don't know, it's something that we, we hear a lot, it's you own your career. So it's really up to you to start. And as I said, there are things that really takes five, 10 minutes to do. So it is your career, it is your, your future, pretty much. And <laughs> you have to remember that it's a journey, and that you might try to, you might set yourself a goal that you will never reach. But the end destination is not the most important. It's it's the path and the journey because you will learn things about yourself. You will learn new things, and maybe between. 
point A and B, you will realize that you don't really want to go to B, but you want to go to C. So it's always the, the journey and the path that is more important than the destination. Um, if you still don't really know what to do and how to improve, um, you can look at uh, your career ladder. Usually every company, they have those uh, kind of ladder. You go from uh, associate or junior to uh, engineer to senior to principal. So you can look at those, uh, those job descriptions or the, what, what is expected from, from those job descriptions and try to assess yourself against it, say, oh, a senior engineer is expected to do that. How I am rating myself against, against those criteria? Another good thing to do is kind of the training need analysis. So um, I want to become a great um, principal software engineer. What are the trainings that I need? Um, what is expected from the front end? <laughs> One thing in technology we tend to forget is to try to develop non-technical skills. And from the same report, it's expected by uh, <clears throat> 2022 that um, where like more traditional skills like creativity, uh, critical thinking, negotiation, problem solving will kind of retain their importance in the industry. All the human kind of soft skills, um, emotional intelligence, leadership, social influence, all those type of, of skills will increase in demand and will be uh, much more uh, important into finding a job or like evolving into your current job. <laughs> um, a great way to also find new ways of uh, growing and new ways of thinking is to do some networking and to talk with people that are not necessarily in your area of uh, expertise or work. Um, so, for example, committees of practice are great for that because you can exchange about a subject with different people. Uh, but meetups, conferences, anywhere, just try to get a bit of diversity uh, into your, uh, your thinking. Curiosity, obviously, curiosity is great. Uh, be curious about, about anything and everything. Um, and another quite useful uh, tool could be to uh, find a mentor or be a mentor also because it's most of the time the relation is a benefit for both sides and also some coaching into some maybe more specific uh, areas. So that's uh, the overall summary on like a few techniques and uh, tools that you can start to use to um, try to continuously improve your career. Um, we have maybe a few minutes for question, a minute or two, and maybe one or two questions. Yeah? Cool. Uh, yeah, so this is excellent. So um, I have a question about uh, the career path that you talked about earlier. Right? So as a senior engineer or a senior consultant, when you look at your career, at some point, you can make a decision where, whether you want to go down the managerial path or the technical path. So, oftentimes, people were a little bit hesitated moving to the manager path because meaning that you would give up all your, you know, coding expertise and, and then you start learning something completely technical. Um, so, have you had experience about that? And of course, how do you some people make a decision? So, the, the question is. Um, Quite often for uh, someone that works in technical uh, area, uh, there is a one point in the career where you have to decide either you stay in technical or you go into the management. And I think a good answer is to go back to these passion and talents and 
try to see if you, if in your questions you have like three, four things that are really technical, I think you should stay into this technical path. If you like a bit more passionate about people, management, helping others, then management might be a good, uh, a good uh, opportunity. So I think we, we are out of time, so thank you very much.